Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have a brand new deck tech for you, but before that, just a quick reminder to please click like and subscribe if you enjoyed my videos. We're well on our way to a million subscribers and every single click counts. And today's deck tech is going to be focused on the 14th Doctor. For one hybrid gruel, one white and one blue, it's a legendary creature Time Lord Doctor 3-4 with when you cast this spell, reveal the top 14 cards of your library. Put all Doctor cards revealed this way into your graveyard and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may have the 14th Doctor enter the battlefield as a copy of a Doctor card in your graveyard that was put there from the library this turn. If you do, it gains haste until end of turn. And we're going to be pairing the Doctor with Rose Noble for three colors and one blue. It's a legendary creature, Human 2-3 with Ward 2. And whenever you cast a Doctor spell or creature spell with Doctor's Companion. Now this combination of cards is absolutely awesome for multiple reasons. First, the 14th Doctor is super cool. It can fill up our graveyard with all sorts of tasty things, and it can allow us to play a Doctor Tribal Commander deck, which is obviously sick. Then you're also going to be able to copy an expensive Doctor and effectively have him in play very early on, thanks to this, although that requires a little bit of luck. But both of those things together make this a very interesting Commander, and Rose Noble is an absolute house as well. Ward 2 is always really good on Commanders, particularly on Commanders that aren't extremely kill on sight, and I don't think Rose necessarily is. That means that she's probably going to stick around as you play play doctor after doctor and draw card after card and it's just going to be very difficult for other people to keep up with that kind of game plan. The main way we're going to try to win with this deck is with Gallifrey Stands that is an absolutely cool enchantment. But yeah without further ado let's have a quick look at how this deck is going to play. And we're starting off with Captain Sisse. This card is obviously very good. We need ways to search out Gallifrey Stands and this also searches out a lot of different cards in our deck. Clara Oswald works really nicely because we have a ton of triggered abilities. Basically every Every doctor has one, so this is obviously sweet. It's also going to work very well with our commander. Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, is going to draw us a lot of cards, seeing as all of our doctors are historic. We're also running a few artifacts as well and a few legendary enchantments, so yeah, there's a lot to like here. Kanaios and Tiro of Miletus is a really sweet card that can allow us to ramp and draw cards. It's also a very friendly group hug card. I really like this, and it can work very well in this deck since we are very mana hungry. Lost Oromantis is really nice as long as we can remove the three counters from it and we do have a few ways to do so and to accelerate it so it seems really good because then we can search for Gallifrey stands and put it straight onto the battlefield. Moon Blessed Cleric is another way for us to search up Gallifrey stands. We do only get to put it on top of our library but it still should be easy enough to draw from there. Perry Brown allows our creatures to tap to cast our first historic spell each turn. That's good because we are still a very mana hungry deck. Griff Sweeper is there just in case they exile Gallifrey stands. It's a way to put it back into our graveyard where we can then recur it. Sphinx of the Second Sun is really good in this deck. It works with a Wincon Gallifrey Stands. It also works with a bunch of different Doctors that all have upkeep triggers. The Eighth Doctor is really nice because it's going to fill up our graveyard, which is something that we kind of want in this deck. And then we're also going to be able to play historic cards from our graveyard once per turn. That's very strong. The Eleventh Doctor is a really interesting one and time counters work very well, again, with all of our extra upkeep cards. So we really like this card in the deck. The Fifteenth Doctor is slightly weaker than some of the other ones but we do want to put stuff into our graveyard so that we can then return it with Gallifrey Stands. We're probably not going to be recurring many things with his first ability though. The fifth Doctor can grow our board very nicely as long as we don't attack with them. It also works very well if we have Perry Brown out because we get to tap the Doctors for mana. The first Doctor searches up TARDIS which we definitely want in the deck because it works well with the ninth Doctor and after that it's going to trigger when we cast stuff with Cascade. That's probably not going to happen too often but once we have TARDIS out we are actually going to be using that ability. The fourth Doctor Doctor is going to give us a nice little bit of card advantage, plus giving us some food tokens, which actually synergize with a bunch of things in the deck, so it's a nice little curve filler. The Fugitive Doctor can work very nicely by allowing us to recur some very powerful sorceries and instants from our graveyard. The Ninth Doctor is one of the better ones in this deck because we can attack with it or crew the TARDIS or tap it for anything else, and then it's going to give us an extra upkeep step, and again we have a lot of upkeep abilities, so this should be very strong. The Second Doctor is one that I like a lot, and it just gives a nice little mind game effect plus we actually want the no maximum hand size quite a lot in this deck since we're going to be drawing a lot of cards. The seventh doctor provides another interesting minds game effect. This is one of the weaker doctors still but it's always fun to play around with and of course we want to cram the deck as full of doctors as we can. The sixth doctor is a crucial one. It can be very very powerful particularly if we get to follow it up with something like Gallifrey stands because then we get two of Gallifrey stands which means that we should be finishing the game twice as fast. 
fast. The 10th Doctor is always good, suspending a card is nice and then being able to time travel three times can be very relevant in this deck. The 3rd Doctor is again one of the weaker ones because our deck isn't particularly built around it, but it can still get fairly big. The 13th Doctor is another one that seems a little bit weak at first glance, but actually we do have a couple of counters cards and we are casting some stuff from places other than our hand, so considering this only costs 3 mana, it should be quite reasonable. The 12th Doctor, as you know, I have a bit of a soft spot for. It's not as good really when you're not building around it, but there still are a couple of cards that might be able to trigger it. The War Doctor is very strong and we are still exiling quite a few cards here and there, so we should get to trigger this quite a bit. And finally, Titan of Lijara is going to be a great way to draw a bunch of cards whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, and it actually counts as a Doctor itself as well. Moving on to Sorceries, we have Ascend from Avernus, which when coupled with Gallifrey Stance can kind of win us the game out of nowhere. Search for Glory is going to allow us to find a Gallifrey Stance or any particular Doctor that we need at that given time. Storm of Souls is similar to Ascend from Avernus, we can just play it to get all of our Doctors back into play. The Five Doctors is amazing if we can sink 11 mana into it, because suddenly we're going to have five Doctors straight onto the battlefield. And Twice Upon a Time is very strong in this deck, we get to search up a Doctor first, that's obviously good, and then casting it to take an extra turn is really nice. Finally I wanted to highlight Venture Forth, because it is a source of ramp that kind of keeps giving, and we do have a little bit of upkeep manipulation, so this kind of works very well. For instance, we're running Boros Charm, seeing as we absolutely need to protect our board against dangerous things. Heroic Intervention is also going to protect our board. It's a little bit better than Boros Charm most of the time. Reverse Polarity is a card I really like, and it can just win you games out of nowhere. Sometimes we might not have our Gallifrey Stands win con, but we have a big board with a bunch of Doctors, and this can just make sure that they all get through. And Time Lord Regeneration is really nice because it makes sure that we can find another Doctor whilst the first one is going to the graveyard to be recurred by Gallifrey Stands. For Artifacts, we're running Mask Wood Nexus. Even though most of the creatures in the deck are Doctors, this just guarantees that every creature in play is a Doctor and means that we can sometimes win the game by just making tokens with it. Tardis we already mentioned, but as we've said, this card is very good seeing as our entire deck is Time Lords. And moving on to Enchantments, we have An Unearthly Child. This is a Saga, so it's going to trigger all of our historic effects, and it also just gives us three Doctors, essentially, which is very good. Fugitive of the Judoon provides us a nice little bit of value early on, and then we just get to search a Doctor and put it straight onto the battlefield later. Very strong. Gallifrey stands as the main way we're going to try to win the game in this deck. We're just going to try to have 13 Doctors in play, which is difficult, but I feel we can get it done. Kindred Discovery is going to draw us a lot of cards whenever we attack with Doctors or whenever a Doctor enters the battlefield. Paradox Haze is very nice because it works with our win con, Gallifrey stands, and it also works with a lot of our different Doctor cards and time counter cards. Storm of Saramana is a card that's been growing on me a lot lately. This card is really, really good. And since we're running so many legendaries, getting an extra copy again of Gallifrey stands or of one of our Doctor cards can be huge. The Caves of Androzani is a really interesting card so initially it's just going to put stun counters on some creatures. That's actually not bad, it can buy us some time. The second and third chapter are basically proliferate that doesn't work with sagas. That's okay, it's not super exciting, but we definitely want it for the last mode that is going to give us a Doctor card. The Day of the Doctor is very strong as long as it doesn't get removed, because it's going to basically tutor for a lot of different legendary cards, which are most likely going to be Doctors. The final mode is what we really want though. It's incredibly powerful if we just get to wipe the board and keep three of our Doctors, although it's not very likely that our opponents are going to let us get this off. The 11th hour searches for a Doctor card, just like a lot of our other sagas. Then the second mode makes all of our Doctors cheaper, which of course we are super interested in. And finally we actually get to copy a Doctor, but it has a different name, so we can basically double up on one of our Doctor's effects. The Gun in the Fireplace is actually a very annoying saga. It creates a creature that can stick around for three turns and basically block anything, which is very annoying. The second mode basically creates a token that makes all of our Doctors unblock though be careful it doesn't get removed at instant speed. And the third mode doesn't do too much in this deck, but we do occasionally want to time travel, so it might be reasonable. The Knight of the Doctor is a good board wipe effect. It wipes the board instantly, so we don't have to wait. And then we get to bring a Legendary back later on, which is pretty decent, particularly since we can put an extra counter on it. Finally, looking at lands, we are running Alchemist Refuge, because it can be nice sometimes to play some of our Doctors, or even Gallifrey stands at the opponent's end step. Gallifrey Council Chamber surveils, which is something that we're interested that in doing, and then it's going to fix our mana very nicely. Reliquary Tower we want, even though we're in a four mana deck, because we do want to make sure that we can keep all of those cards that we're drawing, particularly so that we can put them into play with Gallifrey Stands. And Trenzalore Clock Tower is a very powerful effect in a deck like this, because it actually gives us a way to make sure that our opponents don't just exile our whole graveyard, which would mean, of course, that we can't achieve our win con. This is very nice, because
because we can do it at instant speed. So there you have it. That has been our 14th Doctor deck tech with Rose Noble. What do you think about this one? This is such a meme and I'm so excited to be able to do it when the secret lair cards finally arrive. But what do you think? Are there any cards I missed? Any things you think I should not have included? Let me know in the comment section below. I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, take care.